Welcome to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Hey, it's Tuesday night. It means we're live for no reason. <laughs> oh, there's plenty of reasons. Uh, one, we've got uh, the new element Night Runner in the house. And i um, going to put some parts on it tonight, I think. Uh, why don't you uh, check in, let me know where you're watching from, and uh, if you can hear me just fine. Because I think that's probably key to this whole experience. Hope uh, everyone's having a good week so far. Um, not much to report from me. It's been busy at work. Uh, there seems to be no end in sight to that. Uh, but that's sort of okay. That's fine. Uh, let's cut over to the bench here. Hello, Bucks RC World. Uh, there we are. The bench. Uh, let's make me floating me. Perfect. Iowa. Charleston. Oh, I love Charleston, South Carolina. Um, beautiful area. Brian Sherwood, North Carolina. We've got both Carolinas. I think we can just end the show right there. Um, so, yeah, hey, look it up. It's the uh, Element Night Runner. Enduro Night Runner. And uh, this is, a, a, like I've, I've said in the video before, a, uh, whatchamacallit, a Polab. It's all the, all the yeet kids are saying stuff like that uh it's a collab between james knight from knight customs and element rc um james is responsible mostly for the design of the body uh the bumpers uh the rooftop tent the uh, roof or not rooftop tent it's a bed tent topper thingamajig um the cage for that thing front runner um um racks and most of the 3d or most of the um not 3d but molded details that are included on the truck and uh if you know james at all you know that james is uh quite good <laughs> with designing and 3d printing things um so um yeah he's uh he's already started offering some stuff in the my mini factory to make this truck even more cool and one thing you probably didn't know if you didn't she <laughs> yeah exactly exactly nate <laughs> uh one thing you may not have known if you didn't watch my review video shame on you um you fool me once shame on shame on you you fool me twice you can't fool me again <laughs> Um, shame on you for not watching the review video if you didn't. But uh, one of the cool things that James and an Element made sure to do was, did he say Knight Industries? I'm sure, I'm surprised Hemistorm didn't say Knight's Customs. Because we all know that that's one thing that James gets confused for is Knight's Customs. Um, so, yeah, what I was saying was, if you didn't know, because you didn't watch the review video. Zooming in. Uh, all of these lights where there's a sticker, underneath that, there is no paint. Let's remove these stickers, because we're not going to need these stickers anymore. Let's try to peel them off carefully, though, is if that's possible. I doubt that it is, because I'm not... These are Once they're on there, it's like... There's no taking them off in one piece, ever. And I've got no fingernails, so I'm going to make a huge mess, and then I'm going to need to get the goo gone out. Makes me very unhappy. Brian from Ohio. Welcome. What will this rig set me back? Uh, this rig, Harris Adventures, is 429 US RTR. Add your own battery and charger, of course. Uh, I know A-Main has a battery charger combo, I think, for $4.99. Warm them up with hot air. That's a good idea. Then I'd have to get out my heat gun. I do have rubbing alcohol. But I'm an expert. <laughs> All in one piece until I ripped it off my thumb. We're not going to need them, but you know what I do? I like to stick them up 
on the top of my workbench. There's like a whole like I've sticker bombed the whole thing. Why remove the stickers? Won't the lights shine through them? Good question, Stabby Josh. They probably would, but then you would lose all this detail from the new light buckets. And the whole point is to see those. So there you go. Tune in and watch Matt peel off stickers. It's going to be a good episode. <laughs> the, I can feel the likes going through the roof. And if you haven't, hit that like button, please. And if you don't like it, for whatever reason, hit the dislike button. Hit a button. Don't like Canada, but I like this guy. All right. I don't know why you wouldn't like Canada. Got trees. Use the Dremel. Oh, the Dremel jokes. Yeah, I guess, you know, we could use a Dremel, couldn't we? Not near as bad as I thought. I have axials, but want something different. I was eyeing axials, new Bronco, but I don't know. Uh, they're both. Okay, so right off the bat, I can tell you that this truck will be less capable uh, because it is 155s, IFS, tiny tires, and quite low to the ground. Um, so you're not going to get the same level of performance out of the box. Uh, that said, if you're just looking for a really excellent, good-looking trail truck, it's pretty hard to beat. I think it looks pretty awesome. Uh, okay, let's get the body off. I'm not going to do the tail lights today. Because I think those are going to require more detailing. And I, I'm not sure that I've actually uh, got all the right parts printed out. I've printed out a bunch of stuff from James. Uh, this is all in his My Mini Factory. And I probably should have put a link in the description. I didn't do that. Or it, yes, I did. I did put a link in the description for his My Mini Factory. But there's the inner fenders. And I'm not sure you can see that or not. But there's a night logo there and i've printed all these at home on my prusa i don't think I, I think i did these at like uh 20 mil so they're not like super high quality but they look pretty good um we've got the grill this is sort of like the more tr do yoda the moyota this is the moyota shikoma <laughs> more fitting grill and i've got some artful dodgers um emblems here that i'm going to try to make use of as well uh for the purposes of this video uh this is not painted obviously and this should separate from that fairly easily yes it's why won't you come off it's on there pretty good uh they do separate obviously i don't want to break it because you know you can pretty easily break these things if you're not too careful um there we go so this grill is a separate printed piece and what i'll do before i install it for realsies is i'll um i'll give it a quick sanding and then uh, some filler primer just to smooth it out a little bit and then paint it and i'll do a flat black just like the existing grill all right let's get this body off here real quick there are a lot of body pins um element is definitely a little bit behind the curve in that regard um but um i mean you kind of it's forgivable based on the cool accessories that they included so sort of a turnkey trail truck that's sort of how i like to look at it k bob 1121 thanks for the 4.99 uh, unrelated to the element do you know of anyone who makes a track bar mount for a cap putting 10 three axles in mine and that's my biggest hang up a track bar do you mean a panhard uh like are you doing like a, a servo on chassis for that one track bar i don't i don't think that's a thing correct me if i'm wrong i'm you know I, i'm happy to be wrong uh, it happens a lot um but i don't think you've got the terminology correct there maybe i'm i'm like i said maybe i'm wrong 
but a track bar, isn't that like a, I almost have to Google it. Can someone, can somebody help me help K-Bob? Track bar is the same as a panhard. Okay, so I don't think you need, I don't think you need a panhard for a Capra. What you're probably more interested in finding is servo on axle for a 10-3 axle. That's more challenging. Why don't you just go 10-2 axle because there's a ton of servo on axle mounts for that. That would be my suggestion. That's what I would. That's what I would do. Uh, in fact, that's what I did. When I, I have I have ten two axles under my Capra, and I put a servo and axle uh, curry on there, which made it infinitely easier. Um, so yeah, that's that's probably where I would start. Good question though, definitely. Um, okay. Um, so first thing first, some of the accessories like the door handles and the rear view mirrors, those are on with a body clip and a, uh, you know, a plastic spacer. Um, the front grill is on with these little like, um, chassis mounted servo on a Capra. Yeah. I've, I've never seen that. I'm sure it can be done. Uh, these are got, these got these little like, uh, plastic, uh, black discs, and they're just a friction fit uh, on this on this front piece for the grill here. So pretty easy to remove. Eh, there we go. And then you can just pop that whole piece out. And then I bet James is going to want us to drill some new holes for this piece. Uh, but oh, damn. Boy, that already doesn't look cool as. Oh, actually, it looks like he's got the holes already pre-mounted for that. But chances are that's not going to sit flush. So, yeah, you do have to make a couple more holes for the grill. Dremel. I am not getting out the drum. Not today, sir. Not today. Um, but that is a great-looking light bucket i like that he's got the little uh texture details Let's see if i can tighten up on that for a second the texture details uh just below there that looks really neat very very cool how heavy is the body uh stabby josh i don't have a scale that could weigh this but it's not a heavy body it is lexan um once you add all the stuff like the rooftop mm -hmm bed tent and everything then it does tend to get a little bit heavier uh i'm gonna see here if i can mark these holes looks like i should be able to get out a pen not a pencil for this task am i planning to put leds yes uh i'm probably going to um See about getting a MyTrick RC set up in this truck. Hopefully that'll reach. Might not. I used to have. I don't know if it still works or not. But I've got this, this cool marker. It's a long-nosed pattern marker. And look at the size of that. Perfect for getting into these tight spaces. So you can mark out your holes. Hopefully that's long enough too. It's a pretty tight, pretty tight hole. <laughs> nope, not tight enough. Okay, so next idea. Where is my oh, pin vise? Another great tool for marking holes is a good old fashioned pin vise. You can actually even probably start the, to drill that hole. Quack RC, thanks for the two bucks. You should make a series just on peeling stickers. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that would be a very valuable um, series. 
Cool, so now I've actually, you can see that I've scored the paint there with the pin vise. So that's what he said. Mm, uh, yeah. So now I've got a really nice uh, place to mark. I can use my body reamer on those holes. Should be able to get a pretty decent. Uh... There we go. I'm just going to make those a little bit smaller than I probably need to start just to get them started so I can make sure everything's lining up properly. You just jump in picks. You just finished your Ram charger body. I would be proud. I'd love to see that. Tag me on Instagram and I'll check it out. So is the one down vote from Josh because he didn't get one? <laughs> Oh, man. I don't know. All right, we're going to make those holes larger. Trade in value is depreciated. It's full of holes now. Yeah, but I'm upgrading. I'm, making, I'm using these holes to make it better. <laughs> Oh, uh, one other point that I didn't mention in the review, but one thing that I would definitely do is I would get some uh, some rubber gaskets or some shims or something for your body posts so the body gets tightened down a little bit to the chassis. Otherwise, it is a rattle fest. There are so many bits and pieces on here that it does it does rattle a fair bit. All right, so that's the grill fitted fit that's the grill fit hi reggie how are you i had to get my drill what didn't i miss you missed not very much um, i'm just sort of starting to get everything sort of placed here there that was that was exceedingly easy that looks awesome and obviously this will look a lot better once it's flat black and you know more in in keeping with the original grill but i like it it's definitely more toyota ish hi brad how are you josh didn't get one maybe he was mean about other element trucks i don't think he was mean about them i just i don't think they're his favorite but uh yes nate definitely painting the grill black 100 too easy do it again <laughs> That fitment is really great, and I have to say, a good quality 3D printer goes a long way uh, when you're printing these at home. If you do not have a printer at home, James will offer them on his Shapeways store. I would definitely recommend against Shapeways at this point. Their pricing structure has gotten out of control, and um, yeah, I would almost find a friend who's got a 3D printer and just have him or her have them print it for you. Um, but yeah, that already makes it look so much better. And uh, if I had had my wits with me and had some time, I would have done that grill before we even got started today. But already over a sticker, I'll take that extra weight any day of the week. Um, one other thing to mention, uh, there are some, where are they here? I don't know if the I can't remember if these are the right ones or if these are no, these are for the tail lights. Uh, but there are obviously there'll be backers for all of the light buckets here, so it's really super easy for you to install a light and have them stay. I think it might be this one. I'm not sure, yeah, it is this one. So how this works, obviously, James has done his homework. Let me see if I can get a good angle of it here. This little doodad, this little guy right here, keys in with that post right there, and then that'll lock your lights in place. It doesn't stay in place. You'll need to screw it in. But that's 
how that works. So then you've uh, you've got your turn signals or your I guess it'd actually be your DRLs, your daytime running lights, which are usually orange. That would go there, and then your main headlight. Oops, sorry. Your DRL would go there, and then your main headlight would go in there. So yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I guess if you're going to be buying bluegrass, if you're going to be buying the Shapeways file, or not the Shapeways, if you're buying the My Mini Factory files, I guess you could make some adjustments, or you could just get some uh, some decals and stuff. Those are from uh, Artful Dodgers. They sent those along for me. So that works out pretty well. If you want to go that route too. Looks pretty good. Uh, some other parts that James, that I've already printed here, these are the rear light buckets. Uh, yep, there we go. And those just, uh, I believe, I don't think he made those so they could be uh, placed any other way. I think you have to glue them in place. I guess you could screw them in from the front, but then you'd have an ugly screw out there. So uh, these would just, uh, how would these go here? Like that. The back, oops, here's the, the right side here. Yeah, that'll just glue into the body, just like that. Uh, shoe goo would be my recommendation. When does the Nissan logo go, go on the grill? Well, funny you mentioned that, Marvin, the mofo Martian. Uh, I'm doing that uh, prairie wolf body, the uh, the van body from Charisma, and I don't have I don't have any progress on that. And this isn't really the show for it. But James did do me a solid and print me a new grill <laughs> with the the Chevro Ford logo on the front of it. I LOL'd. When I opened the STL file, <laughs> I was like, yes, somebody else gets my jokes. So that'll be going on the uh, Prairie Wolf at some point in the future. All right, so that's grill. Um, let's move on to the chassis because that's where uh, the next set of things will be going on. But that doesn't that look awesome. I'm pretty I'm pretty chuffed by that. That looks really good. It obviously needs to be painted and detailed, but it's going to be a good one. So thank you, James. Thank you very much, James, for sending those along. All right. Um, let's get these inner fenders. On. I think these are going to be a uh, more interesting challenge. Arturo, uh, no progress on the fun haver. Um, there's been a lot of other projects going on and new trucks coming in and things de demanding my attention so um i haven't gotten to those yet but i promise i will all right locked and loaded <laughs> uh oh big episode of um what's that thing we're doing scx 24 budget build off tomorrow um those should be going going down in the in the morning time sometime so we'll be doing that faux show uh pretty fun progress for me this week i'm really looking forward to showing that one off um there are four screws that you need to uh, remove from the chassis when you're putting these on. Uh, two that hold the front bumper mount in, and then another two along the chassis rails, uh, which are for the battery uh, plate, or battery cover thingy. Double check that upload date. Yeah, copy that. I will. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, I haven't uploaded yet. It's going to probably be uploaded as soon as I get off this live stream. So these fenders were designed specifically with the uh, Night Runner in mind. I don't know if they fit anything else, so don't ask. <laughs> I mean, you can ask, but you're not going to get an answer from me. How's that sound? And because Night... Customs designed this with Enduro, or I mean with Element. Everything lines up perfectly. 
And again, if I had my druthers, I probably... Technical terms lacking. Yeah, Mike, they always do, man. I'm not good with the words for things. Uh, but if I had my druthers, I probably would have painted these as well. Actually, maybe I wouldn't have. Maybe silver's the new look for an inner fender. Words are hard. But I mean, look, it just, it's like, it's like James had one of these sitting on the bench as he was designing. Because it's a perfect fit. Like, it fits perfectly and, and um, you know, works with this longer battery tray. The original uh, truck comes with the shorter battery tray installed. It comes with the longer battery tray as well. I prefer a 5,000 milliamp battery. If I'm going to run this truck, I'm going to run it. And look at this. James took the time to make sure that contoured around that battery tray. That's the attention to detail that I really like about James. He always does a kick-ass job on stuff like that. Um, just going through the comments here. Check them wires. I did. They're out of the way. We're all good. Um, thing fits amazing. Words are hard. What wheels? You know what, guys? I like these these Urbine wheels that they, they came up with. They look really good. I'm not a fan of the General Grabber. It's an okay tire. performs fine for a trail truck. But I think I'm going to put something a little more aggressive on there. I haven't decided what yet. I'd love to stick with the 155 wheel. Maybe I get a slightly larger tire on there. We'll have to see. I mean, James built plenty of travel in specifically for this tire. So I might get a bit of rubbing. Hi, Craig. I might get a bit of rubbing if I go to something else. Uh, but it might be worth it just for the look. So anyway, that went in perfectly. What filament am I using? I am using, uh, this is Prusament uh, Silver. Uh, which works great on the Prusa. <laughs> Let's get the other one on. I'd also, you know, he's already got a bunch. Looks like they use different foam. Uh, they might have. I don't know. They, um, I don't have that truck anymore. That was a giveaway. Stay with 155s for sure. I Yeah, you know what? I kind of feel the same way. I don't know that it needs a bigger tire, or it doesn't need a bigger wheel. Like a 155, what's the math on that? Hang on. Calculator. 155 times 9 only equals a 14-inch wheel. Maybe they went more traditional 10th scale on this. That'd still only be like a 16-inch wheel. But I, it is a great looking wheel. So I will give them that. Uh, on the driver's side, there are a couple of uh, zip ties holding down one of the wires here for the servo. I'm going to clip those. Otherwise, I'm going to crack my inner fender. And since we're using an inner fender, uh, that wire probably won't get in the way anymore anyway. All right. Did this one come with upgraded plastics? Um, that I don't know for sure. I'm pretty sure that it's all the black plastic now, but I have a feeling that they reformulated the black plastic as well. So, I mean, that's a better question maybe for uh, Brad. I'll ask, I'll ask the guys at Element uh, ASAP. Maybe they're even watching. Uh, hey, Darwin, am I going to stance it? No. Stancing trucks... I mean, let's be honest. Josh likes to do things that other people don't do. Don't do what Joshy don't does, I think is probably fair. Show us the frame side pan hard mount. 
There is no pan hard because this is an independent from suspension. You better squat that sucker. I don't think Josh is here, so I don't have to do what he says. Foam interior. No, I'm going to print uh, the actual interior. I think James offers that as well on the My Mini Factory. Um, so I'm going to go check that out and see what I can't, uh, can't find. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Inner fenders are in. Now, I've got a couple of choices here. And maybe you guys can help me decide. Uh, but um, there are two different skid plates. There's this one that is designed, I think, to work better with this sort of setup. The way it's set up here, I don't, I don't know. I think it goes, actually, you know what? It goes this way. So it goes behind. Uh, okay. I was like, why is this one that I printed from way back when so much different? And then I realized that it doesn't tie into the bumper like this one does. So this one actually goes over the bumper and sits in here kind of like that. Whereas this one would just go like that. And that, I don't know if that really kind of works. It doesn't look as good to me. And you kind of don't see the, the TRD logo as long. Well, I mean, you kind of do. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? Which one do you think would look better on there the one that ties in to the bumper entirely and makes this all one nice yeah you know what i think i just answered my own question all right well this was this was a nice piece uh which will still work on on the truck if you decide to go that route but um, we're not doing that we're gonna go with the new one yeah go with the new one do what that guy said Maybe James will offer this new skid plate with the logo. We'll see. We'll see. He's been known to do that. So this just goes, this is pretty smart. Pretty, pretty, pretty smart. So we take off the old one. I admit the new one is better. Probably because it was designed specifically for this truck. Dremel a logo. I'll just, yeah, exactly. Good idea, Gray Matter Fab. I'll just Dremel a logo into it. That's why you guys are here. That's why you're watching. He does offer the TRD with the lower... Uh, oh, okay. Cool. Good to know. I'm just going to pre... Uh, we drill those into place. Noise. Twin Kids TV, go ahead with your question. Cool. That is quite SMRT. That is very SMRT. And it actually, it'll make it pretty strong. If you saw before I, when I was showing it off there, it's quite ribbed and beefy. <laughs> Just paint two, TRD on it with a two inch chip brush. You know, I would be better with a two inch chip brush than Josh ever could be. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, where'd my bumper go? right up here <laughs> oh that's a bit of a tighter fit though i might have to drill that out a bit prior to installing it yeah i'm gonna give that a quick i'm gonna give that a quick reaming man the language tonight guys Can you get that body separate? Not yet. Not yet that I know of. Uh, but I'm sure that 
uh, they'll offer it separately eventually. It's going to be, as far as I can tell, it's already going to be a pretty big seller just because of the, the look of the truck. Step away for a minute and I see this shot. What do you mean? Do I have an interior for it? Uh, not printed yet, no. But uh, there is one available. Oh, that is... That is quite brilliant, James. Solid. I love that. So much better looking than this. So much better. Uh, no, there is an interior available through Night Customs, from what I understand. I don't, uh, I haven't printed it out yet, uh, but it should be on the My Mini Factory page. Just double check that before you, um, before I tell you the wrong thing. Sure, we've got everything lined up here. Can push that bumper in a little bit further. Yeah. Yes. That already looks phenomenal. Skid plate looks too big. I don't think so. It looks pretty much lined up with the actual bumper here, and it's going to offer a good amount of protection. I like this. I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it for now. Uh, so I joined late. Can you share the Night Custom 3D plans? My son has a good 3D printer. Uh, there is a link in the description, Carlos. I can't share the files with you. That would kind of go against the idea of you buying them from James. Um, but uh, I... I the link uh, is functioning. It takes you right to his My Mini Factory page. You can download all the files right there. Skid's about the same scale. Okay, thanks, JDRC. I appreciate that. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I think uh, just because of the way it ties in, I like it a lot better. Did you print the rear inner fenders too? Uh, no, I don't think I did. I'm actually not, to be totally honest with you, I'm not sure those are on there. Let me see if I can find that uh, quickly. Nine Mini Factory. Just going over to the website real quick. Um, sorry, I'm just going into the website real quick here. I know we uploaded them just recently. Element Night Runner. There are no rear fenders that I can see. So I don't think he's offering them for this truck. If I'm honest... It could use them. So maybe he'll add that as an option for later. Uh, but yeah, there is a full interior available. There's all kinds of accessories for the adventure rack on the back there. Uh, there is another option for inner fenders with um, rock lights as an option. So there's a ton of stuff. There's a ton of stuff for sure. I definitely recommend checking it out. Looks a lot like a TRX4 Sport. Uh, nope. <laughs> I don't think it looks anything like a TRX4 Sport. I think TR the TRX4 Sport looks like a TRX4 Sport. This definitely looks, if I'm going to say anything, it looks like a Toyota. Uh, how do you get? How did you get to the screws for the bumper now that the skid plate is on? Well, you don't. I believe. 
it's a friction fit as far as I can tell and you shouldn't need to get to the bumper screws because what I should have done if I'm honest is put the screws in no that wouldn't have worked either maybe you could put them actually you can put them in from the top yeah you can just put them in from the top just go this way instead beep boop beep if you were so inclined i think that yeah you can totally do that if you really want to lock everything in place and some people will want to for sure Those inner fenders, though, let's get a look at those. I think that, oh, it's so great to not to see anything under there. Fantastic. Uh, hey, Tyler, um, do you really, do you think this is worth the money? I really like the taco style body. That's the thing. If you like this body and you like the idea of an IFS trail truck, then yeah, I would, I would definitely say that this is worth it. Um, it's a great looking truck. There's a lot of options now for the element trucks to make them whatever you want. Um, yeah, I would definitely say that it's, it's worth it. I mean, it's a pretty reasonable price for an RTR. 429 isn't terrible. Will they offer a kit? Don't know. That's not something I'm, I'm privy to and not something I would be able to share with you even if I did know. Um, but I mean, it's pretty decent value and you know what you're getting. I mean, the, you get the 12% or 6% overdrive in the front axle. Um, you get pretty, you know, basic chassis layout. It's not any different from any other Enduros. It's just a longer wheelbase with a much better body and some really cool James Knight accessories. So. You can push the bumper in further if you want. Uh, that is not as as far in as it goes. It'll go in another slot if you want. I just pushed it out further for the time being. But yeah, we could push it in further if you wanted to. I'm curious to see the interior. You know what, Wes? It's a long print. I uh, actually started it, and then um, I was like, you know what? That's not going to be ready in time. So I uh, put it on pause. <laughs> Noob. Hi, Richard. Uh, they should have made it white. My Tacoma is white. Why didn't they make it white? I agree. They should have made it tan. Or what's another? Inferno. They should have made it Inferno. Why wasn't it Inferno? I don't know. White would have been a good choice, too. <laughs> Not granite. Ridiculous. Are you going to paint the grill? Yes. Um... They make Lexan inner fenders for the Sendero. I'm not sure uh, where the truck... This truck is longer, uh, so I don't think the rear inner fenders would work nearly as well. They might bolt in somewhere, but... Um, paint the grill white. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, I've got to think about what I'm going to do in terms of the look. The sticker sheet... Let me get that for a second here. It's a good decal sheet. Like, there's a ton of stickers on here. I don't really know. I don't love the profile on these, though. I like the topography look. Like, that's really cool. But I don't like the way it goes or doesn't go all over. Like, it doesn't contour properly. I don't know. It should go all the way down. It should go down on this part of the fender. Anyway. So I don't know if I'm going to paint it or if I'm going to um, do up some decals with my Cricut. No SBG stick. I know. I was furious. They put a bunch of kangaroos on there. At least there's no Harley sticker. That would have that would have that would have got my goat. Uh, but they did a nice job. There's some nice stickers on here and I do like all the the uh, bumpers or uh, license plates. They did a nice job on those. Those are cool. 
I don't like the bumper stickers, though. Mine are better. <laughs> this is magnetic gray. Yes, not granite. Granite, I believe, is not even a Toyota color. Uh, Ace the Turtle. Hey, can you tell me where you can buy new parts for my Viterra Ascender? Uh, I don't know. You're going to have to look for, like, old stock because they're not making uh, that truck anymore. So you might be on your own there. I, I know that hobby shops would probably still stock parts, if, if anywhere. Horizon might carry some, but that's about it. Yeah, taco uh, gray is cement. That is true. But there is a silver color as well. Uh, and Richard would know. Uh, kangaroos aren't even allowed to drive in the U.S. Yeah, what about a Harley Smells? I'll talk, you know what, I'll talk to the guys at Element. Uh, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help me there. Um, what else? You know, funny that we were talking about skid plates. I didn't have, where is that? Where is that? I have an extra skid plate somewhere. From Artful Dodgers. Where'd it go? Here it is. They do have this skid plate. And this one's aluminum or steel. That could be kind of neat to put on too. Does it look scale next to a TF2? That's a great question. Let's find out, shall we? There's a room on the bench here. Here's my TF2. Mm -hmm. No. Maybe, well, maybe. I don't know. This one's a bit bigger and clapped out. So, ooh, it's getting all rusty. Cool. No, it doesn't. It's close. It's pretty close. I think James did make it. I mean, it's definitely longer. It looks smaller, but is it? I mean, these were small in real life. It's close. Yeah, the Tacomas are definitely, like, in terms of the length, there's no way that that's correct, because... Oh. How am I going to do this? There. There is the front wheels lined up. There's about two inches, so that's not right. It's close. I mean, it's close enough for jazz. Let's put it that way. You'd be able to get away with it. I think this would probably be... This is probably a more fair example. <laughs> it's a bit dusty. That's the best angle. Here we go. There we go. That's probably... That's pretty close. I cannot go any wider. But imagine... That we're sitting a bit lower. That's about the same. Yeah. That's pretty close. So there you go. If you have someone with a... Um, SCX-10-3 or a VS-410 with a JL body on it, then you'd be right at home. My Toyota's better than your Jeep! Jeep recovery truck! <laughs> uh, what is that Jeep? This is a VS-410 uh, with the, the axial body on it. Using JL... <laughs> oddly, using Knight Customs conversion kit so you can uh, run... Uh, his inner fenders, and everything on a VS410. I think it looks great. Wait, we're not really looking at that right now. This is about Toyotas, man! Or things that look slightly like Toyotas. 
how close is the scale of the KBLC70? I don't know what a KB is. And I don't have a 70 series here. So your guess is as good as mine. All right, somebody wanted to see 1.9s on there. Should we put these horrible tires on it? Which is the right way? I can never, I don't know which way these tires are supposed to go. I think these are probably the other ones. Put a super body on it. You want to see it next to the Bronco? I think you're, get ready to be disappointed because it's not going to be anywhere close to the right scale. I don't think anyway. Um, well, well, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, just recognize something that we should really do post haste. Can't believe I didn't do this right away. Didn't even get it done for the, there we go. That's better. So yeah, Broncos are big for sure. I don't have the TRX4 Sport handy, so that's not happening. Not same scale, you're bad at this. You call yourself a scalar bill man, shame. This is not my fault, Richard. I don't make these trucks. I think James did pretty good. It's just a slightly smaller, it's not quite ninth scale. I think it's probably a little bit closer to 10th. But let's be fair, it never ex this doesn't really exist in real life. <laughs> or does it? All right, let's get these. What's the deal with these? Do I have to take, this has to come off first, right? Can I pair, compare it to a banana? I could definitely try comparing it to a banana. Do these, yeah, they do. Next to the RCPC. Put it up against a 14th scale semi. I want to know how it looks. <laughs> okay. One tenth swap the world. I like it when Richard watches my streams. Makes me feel better. <laughs> oh <laughs> I'm looking at it on the screen and this looks ridiculous. I think these are a little bit too big. <laughs> it uh it definitely stuffs in there a bit there's gonna be a bit of rub i think <laughs> that's normal right <laughs> uh I don't make the trucks. That is correct. Okay, so that's too big. What else have we got here? What do we fit on there that might not look ridiculous? What have I got in the collection? Let's see. All right. Uh, that'll be too big. Those are too big. And this is probably going to look dumb because it's smaller. Ugh. I don't like that. That's something Josh would do. You're totally right about that. Uh, what have I got? I know I have set. What about this? Oops, I lost the pin. We need that. Put it next to the 10-3 Bronco. No, Mel, it's there. <laughs> the that's seventh scale. It's gonna look comically small compared to that okay there we go that's not so bad it mm, it still looks pretty big just let them clear it themselves <laughs> uh, 
All right, what else have we got here? We got some weird tires that you're not going to like. So that's what is this? This is the Proline Grunt, and it's a four point four. Now here's a Wrangler, uh, and this is the one five five one. So that's going to look hilarious. So that's not, put it next to the deadbolt. <laughs> Original RC four wheel drive mudslingers only. Well. How about rock stompers? I got some rock stompers handy. Ooh, that actually looks pretty good. Maybe too much wheel. I know these are a 155. I stretched them onto 199s. Uh, Matt, how do you know they're getting the 12.8 inch wheelbase? Because that's what this is. It's 12.8 inches in, in length. Maybe I'm under, not understanding the question. Those, yeah, these don't look too bad. That's the, the mud stomper. It's a terrible tire. And it's like old AF, so it doesn't really work. But I'm thinking, you know what I'm thinking? I'm, thi I'm thinking to myself, self, you know what might look good? Aren't you guys so happy I have all of these wheels and tires? How about an eight uh, KO two? I think we that I don't know. That even looks too big too. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put it on for a second here. Uh, I do have some Patagonia snow mod. Yes. Hey, uh, nice video you did. Nice running video, by the way. I think I commented on your your video. I liked it. Now. Hmm. The only Patagonias I have are currently on the Cherokee 6x6. Yeah, the KO2 isn't bad, though, isn't it? How many more of those do I have mounted up? Three. There should be a fourth one, wouldn't there? Wouldn't you think? And fine. Oh, you know what? Before we do all four of those, or at least I'll do two. Trim the flares. Yeah, I mean, I could. I, I'm kind of trying to keep it stock for now before I make any rash decisions. Here's a super swamper, which obviously would go on a truck like this. That looks not good either. C and Dooley's. <laughs> There's some really great choices uh, you guys are coming up with here. Actually, here's the general grabber uh, that was on the... Uh, which one was had the gold wheels? The Sendero? Yikes, that looks ridiculous. Okay, I think for now, if it's not the stockers, it's these Proline uh, KO2s. Matt tracks, yeah, another option for sure. Oh, you have real KO2s on yours. Doesn't RC four-wheel drive make a KO2 that's slightly smaller than this? Why am I why am I feeling like they do? And that I have a setup. I've got too many tires. I have a lot of tires. Oh now I here's the perfect tire. The Proline Super Swamper. It's only 5.4 inches tall. Don't worry about it. That'll look great. 155 crawlers. Uh, no, I don't have any of those. I don't think it. Oh, wait a second. Maybe I do. What is this? This is the 1.7 crawler, which is smaller than the stock tire. Uh, Duratrax? Yeah, I got, I got those. What are they? There's nothing. Well, here's one. They've got, they're mounted up on the slot mag, so they're going to look kind of silly. Uh, but that might be worth a try. I, 
Yeah, I may have so many quack that I could open. Uh, that dirt track looks not too shabby. I'd probably go stock over that, though. What's on my mini me? Those are the KO2s on the mini me. So that's what that's what this is. But let's put those on both on one side. Dirt tracks look good. You just think they need a different wheel? You see. What have I got? I don't think I have anything good wheel wise. I thought maybe a roost wheel would look good oops a roost wheel would look good on there but to mock those up right now i'd it would take me all night scale builders and tile tires group i do like the roost that could be an option maybe the roost on the dura track or on the ko2 proline class zero yeah i'll check that one out too close in color Hi, Ben. How are you? I don't know, guys. I think it makes it look a little weird. And if I get into, like, trimming the fenders and stuff, that's just going to look even weirder in my mind. Hey, those don't actually... Those don't belong on there, but they don't look too bad. It's not the worst in the whole world. But it is a little bit too big. It just fills the fender too much. Yep. Rip sauce. Stock might be best. So it must be 10th scale then. Or closer to 10th than 9th. Uh, I'm sure, Gage, that they will offer a, uh, a clear body at some point. I don't think they'll offer it right away. When is stock best? I kind of agree with Ben. I'm always like, let's find something better. There's got to be something better that we can put on there. But currently, that's all I have in the collection that I think is going to look good darn it oh wait a second wait one second what about this might be too tall as well can't believe i'm opening it but i am what about a pitbull growler 155 we go with this wheel is that going to be too much tire That's going to be too much tire. That's almost that's almost like KO2 height. But wait, there's more. Yeah, I don't know. Pitbull is 155 Rock Beasts. Yeah, that could be a thing. That could be a thing for sure. Something to consider, anyway. Um, there's going to be lots of choices to make, I think, with this truck. Stock does look pretty darn good, though, man. I got to say, they did nail the look. Anybody remember what the size on this grabber is? Not the best performer, but they do look pretty good. Growlers, yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, 3.85. So something in that range, what's this? 375. See, that might look good too. You're right, it just might be the wheel. Dirt track on a roost. Let's just, you know what? Let's mock it up real quick. What else are we doing tonight, right? Let's just mock it up. Stock does look pretty good, though. They did a good job.
Next, on <laughs> scale tire rack. Yeah, I'm basically like, uh, you just plug in what truck you have and what tire and wheel combo you want. <laughs> Keep wheels, go with BFGs. Uh, yeah, except they're 155 and BFG, I don't think. Whoa, what's going on there? Oh, uh -huh. wrong size thingy. How difficult would it be to make a camper from scratch? Ask Richard Martin, my noob. It's not that hard. Totally doable. Pitbull 155 Braven Berserker. I don't like the Braven Berserker, though. I have that tire somewhere. I use it on something. Hey, military nut. Hello from Montana. We watch your videos in our store all the time. What kind of store do you have? It's like choosing a setup on video game. It's, yeah, it is. Exactly, Wes. It's like building your character on, like, Golf Pro or whatever. <laughs> I have not taken these roosts off in a very long time. I don't even remember what truck these were on. Well, they're the VXT, so it must have been the maybe the Vanquish Origin. A builder's kit with a clear body. That would be cool. I'm back. Snow Mike J. I have not run out of tires yet. We're still trying different tires. That's like... For me, tires is probably one of the most fun things you can modify or change. Cavalry blue. Oh, man. You're right. That will be a very common color once it, or if the clear body comes out. I cannot confirm nor deny. I don't know. I think it would be great if they did offer one. I don't think it'll be anytime soon, though. They'll, they'll want to get kits out the door. Primarily, that's sort of the <laughs> the reason they put out, or I mean, put out the RTRs first. That's what they do. So people buy those. It's true. A tire change can instantly change the whole look. Good or bad. I think this will be interesting, though. Uh, RC Addict, no need to sell me tires. Uh, I've got plenty. Uh, 3.85 Proline, what is it? Because I've got a bunch of tires here from Proline that... I think I even had that on this at one point, didn't I? It just had the old Toyota wheels on it. Isn't it just a Crawler TA Class Zero tire? This one? BFG uh, Crawler TA? 3.85. Yeah. That's the tire. Just a different wheel. Bad, you know, like putting 20s on a gladiator. Agreed. Where's Josh when you need him? Where's Josh when you need to, to really just verbally abuse somebody? With all of his terrible choices. Terrible life choices. Uh, yes, Matthew, I've, I'm aware of RC Foil Drive having a Wrangler MTR. I have it in the 1.7. Okay, so no... Uh, eh, uh, that's not the worst. It does need a hub, for sure. Otherwise, it looks kind of silly, but... Not terrible. Not great, though. Not great. Let's get this. You don't need to tell me, Carlos. 
Uh, oh, you had a question about the SCX24, I think. Am I going to put the little grill on the snorkel? Yes. Uh, where'd that go? I had that. Good question. Off topic, if I installed the FureTech motor in the STX24, I can't talk about that. I don't want to spoil the surprises. Um, I've got, I do have the motor and the ESC. I just haven't uh, formally installed it yet. That's coming up in other weeks. I haven't even opened the box yet. So can't tell you. Do they knock off scale points for this having a full length frame in the rear? No. No. All right. So there's that tire. But what wheel? Uh, do I have to go into my wheel box? I might have to. What have I got? That would be easy to throw on there. Nothing. We just got rid of a bunch of wheels. Oh, here's one. Just for now, a raceline wheel. Probably nothing you'd ever put on this truck for realsies. But just for the sake of mocking it up, let's do it. When will a brand make a Land Rover Discovery? I think you're going to... I know that um, MST has a uh, a body coming out that looks very close to the uh, Discovery or Disco, some people call them. I, I also like the Irvine wheel. I, I think they did a good job on that wheel. There's something about the 15-inch or 155 that actually does look pretty good. Instead of a box, you should keep your wheels in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I like it. Okay, there's a ramshackle job on that wheel. Too much wheel. Way too much wheel. Might even be a 2.2. <laughs> Uh, West Hunt, yeah. Um, people use RCC or the Scale Builders Guild forums to sell their stuff. Do I have any 310s? I do, but they're gold. I don't think they would go very well with this. I think what we've discovered is that they kind of built this truck around this wheel and tire combo. Did I lose a pin again? Yes? Shoot, where'd the pin go? Dang it. Well, that's gone forever. Good thing I have spares. That's weird. Try the gold. I don't know. They're not even out of the package yet. And besides, they're a 1.9. They're going to look... I still think they're going to look strange in comparison to uh, everything else. This 155 really does suit this truck. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, anyway, I think that's probably a good place to start wrapping it up. Uh, my Forerunner did have custom TRD wheels. That's been sold, though, so those are long gone. Um, yeah, I think we're probably going to wrap it up there, if I'm honest. Um, this was fun. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed 
installing these night customs parts super easy to do i might add uh if you've printed at home that oops if you've printed it at home the tolerances are amazing um so yeah that's probably going to do it for tonight Urbines with scale hubs. Yeah, that could be kind of cool for sure. Quack, I haven't sent the photos out yet, um, but I will definitely do that. So tomorrow, uh, lots of stuff happening. Um, SCX24 budget build off episode two is happening tomorrow. And then uh, we've got Jeff Johns, formerly of Axial Racing, formerly of Red Cat Racing, joining us for an interview on live stream takeover tomorrow night, which is going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to talking to Jeff. It's been a long time. In fact, I think it's been since just before he left Red Cat. So uh, it'll be pretty interesting to talk to him, see what's going on with him. And um, yeah, I think that's probably as good a place as any to sort of end it for tonight. So hopefully you guys got something out of this. Uh, I had a great time installing all these parts. Thank you, James, for giving me an advance on uh, testing these parts out, getting them installed. Thanks to Element for sending this truck along. Uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited. So uh, RCPC wrap-up hopefully happening soon. Uh, next weekend, I think we're going to try and shoot our finales and get all the tests and everything out of the way. And, um, yeah. Uh, okay. Finally, one final thing. Somebody wants to see the, uh, gladiator next to this. I think you'll find that this is also going to be a little large only because it's like completely lifted and gigantic. Let's see if I can even get it on the bench without it looking ridiculous. I mean, they're not lined up properly here. Yeah, that's close enough for Jazz. It's not far off. Looks pretty good. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow night, guys. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, and thanks to KBob1121 and QuackRC. We'll see you tomorrow night for Livestream Takeover. Thanks, everybody. Love you, bye.